Thank you, Karima. First, I want to acknowledge the hard work from our Alberta colleagues in the face of such difficult times with the Fort McMurray fires. At the board meeting on Friday, we heard a number of examples of extraordinary contributions of nurses across all parts of Fort McMurray and surrounding regions in ensuring the safety of their patients and clients. We can only imagine the pressures on these nurses at this time when their own lives were thrown into turmoil as well. I know our thoughts are with them all. Set in C'est un privilège pour moi de m'adresser à vous après une année tout à fait exceptionnelle. 2015 was a very special year for CNA. It really was a year of transition. As you know, it was an election year at the federal level, and it brought many opportunities for us to advocate strongly for good health care for Canadians and promote the work that nurses do every day in this country. CNA's role is to promote RNs, NPs, and the nursing profession within the Canadian health system. We are so proud to have you all with us today, and we will continue to support you in every way that we can. Let me thank all of the 139,000 members that CNA is representing. We, represent, we appreciate your support. We have very much enjoyed working with our, all of our jurisdictional members, and we look forward to enhanced engagement in 2016. And thank you to our 45 specialty network members who represent 59,000 nurses across the country, many of whom has membership that encompasses the broad nursing family, including licensed practical nurses and registered psychiatric nurses. I am very pleased to be able to say that we have ever, members in every province and every territory from coast to coast to coast. In 2014, <laughs> in 2014, we launched our independent and emeritus member categories. And in two short years, we've already reached one, 962 members. So we really look forward to the 2017 AGM when we, I am sure, have over 1,000 members and then that group will have voting rights. There are also quite a few new additions in our own CNA team at CNA House as Carolyn Pullen joined as Director of Policy, Advocacy and Strategy, Joanne Lozon as Director of Finance and Administration, and Patricia Elliott Miller as Executive Lead for Certification and Professional Development. So as I mentioned earlier, we started off the year 2015 knowing that an election was looming large at the horizon. As Karima said a few minutes ago, we focused on home care, supports for seniors, and caregivers. We took that opportunity to influence party platforms by meeting with key politicians like Justin. That's a very favorite picture of Karima's, I might add. We have an eight by 10 glossy for her later. <laughs> Thomas Mulcair, Elizabeth May, Stephen Harper, ministers and members from the Prime Minister's office. And in total, we met with over 77 politicians during the year. As the House of Commons recessed for summer and knowing it was probably not coming back, we launched an election website to get the campaign going from our perspective and to get people involved. It allowed Canadians to share their stories, contact candidates easily, and encourage our members and all Canadians to participate in the activities we were organizing. Some highlights and measurable successes for the website. Over 300,000 page views. Online ads were clicked more than 8,000 by 8,000 unique visitors. We were very active in the media as the campaign was ongoing, and we took part in the Hills Time Election Health pa Panel and drove coverage on our priorities throughout the country. In fact, we were very much engaged with the public last year. We organized many community town halls across the country, Mississauga, Edmonton, Vancouver, and of course, here in Moncton, in New Brunswick here in New Brunswick, in Moncton. Oh, I, I do know where I am. 
All events were extremely well attended, particularly here in New Brunswick, where it was standing room only. Thank you to our NANB colleagues who helped us and attended our event, and to Rochelle Bard, my predecessor, who acted as host. These town halls resulted in a lot of media coverage, provincial, territorial, newspapers, radio, and online news. Ici à Nouveau-Brunswick, l'événement a aussi été largement couvert en français par l'Acadie Nouvelle et Radio-Canada Radio -Canada Atlantique. Our goal for these events was to gather information from Canadians and to share it with the parties, and to share with Canadians what the parties intended to do in the area of health. So we sent questionnaires to all parties to get their views on home care, seniors, caregiver support, and we received very positive and fulsome responses from most of the parties. As you know, since then, we have a new government in Ottawa. It is great to see that their health platform really is aligned to our priorities at CNA. We've had several successful meetings with ministers and policy advisors to share recommendations that will provide input into policy development. Some of these priorities include a new health accord, home care commitments, indigenous health, national health palliative health care, and I could go on and on. There's so much opportunity for us at CNA to participate and have a positive, positive influence on the public debate. Our hopes are very high for the future. We officially launched a safe staffing toolkit with our colleagues at CFNU. Some of you will remember that we offered a sneak peek at the annual meeting of members last year in Ottawa. The toolkit promotes safe staffing practices that are key to quality and safety in patient care and maximize overall outcomes for patients, nurses, and organizations overall. It is available on our Nurse One website. I would like to thank and acknowledge our CFNU colleagues. It really was a great partnership. Now, you will see on that little screen where there is a picture of uh, Linda Silas, president of CFNU, and myself, and that was from last summer. And we were videotaping a video spot where we had to memorize a script. And you can see that Linda is looking at me really quite laughing on, on probably take 11 as I'm trying to spit out whatever it is I'm trying to say. And all I want to be able to say to Linda Silas is that neither one of us should quit our day jobs. <laughs> Another toolkit and resources were developed to focus on working with people living with poverty. We issued two position statements on practice environments. The first one was on maximizing outcomes for clients, nurses, and organizations, and the second was on workplace violence and bullying. We published two ethics and practice papers, respecting choices in the end-of-life care, and one on violence and what you can do. We also held 14 webinars throughout the year. The two most popular have been Uncover Your Inner Leader and Health Coaching, a natural fit for nurses, attracting over 300 people on each webinar. Other topics like dementia and Aboriginal health also attracted their fair share of participants. Overall, we've had 2,800 registrations for our webinars. We look forward to present our new offerings in the coming year, which will include end-of-life care and certification tutorials. We published a framework for registered nurses prescribing in Canada, as Karima mentioned, and we updated the framework for the practice of registered nurses in Canada using a national advisory group consultation process to ensure it reflects current realities. The results of this broad stakeholder engagement will help provincial, territorial governments implement new policies to optimize the scope of practice for registered nurses and nurse practitioners. One of the challenges that faced the nursing profession in 2015 was NCLEX, the new entry to practice exam that students write as a requirement for licensure. In November of 2015, CNA led a roundtable comprised of all the nursing stakeholders with the goal of supporting students as they transition from nursing students to registered nurses. We are committed to will continue working with all of our partners in 2016 on this important matter for our profession. 
We held a nurse practitioner roundtable that brought nurse practitioner groups from across the country to share information, challenges, opportunities for future planning. We advanced primary care and family practice by working with the College of Family Physicians Canada Medical Home Care Steering Committee. We advanced support for nurses working in the school systems in partnership with educators and health professionals in North America. And finally, among other things, we developed resources to support nurses working with Syrian refugees. A very busy year for sure. Of course, a highlight for us at CNA all the time, every year, is to take part and participate in the CNF Gala, a truly wonderful, well-anticipated gala that happens every year and is in such support of the wonderful work that they do in support of our nurses. Wonderful event. We celebrated our 25th anniversary of our certification program and did all the preparatory work to go online in 2016. The program also went beyond Canadian borders for the first time as the Dubai Health Authority asked us to help them establish a national certification program for specialty nurses. And we, par we participated in the 16e Congrès du Secrétariat International des Infirmières et Infirmiers Francophones à Montréal. It attracted over 1,200 participants from 30 countries. Our presentations at that session included prescribing, opportunities and challenges of advanced practice, as well as security of nurses in the workplace. And we continued work on aspects of our memorandum of understanding with the Chinese Nurses Association. We were pleased that a leadership program developed by the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario was chosen by the Chinese Nurses Association for their nursing executives. RNAO delivered the course in Beijing in January 2015 that was based on their best practice guidelines. The feedback from the more than 150 nurse executives that took the program was tremendous. Throughout the year, we have built strong relationships with other healthcare advocacy groups. To name a few initiatives, we've worked with the Canadian Home Care Association on end of life and palliative care approaches. We worked with the Canadian Mood Disorder Society to develop the anti-stigma learning module. We've had speaking opportunities with the Conference Board, the Economic Council of Canada, and many more meaningful engagements. The Canadian Nurse Magazine has celebrated its 112th year of publication and continues to cover topics of interest to our members. 2015 included a lot of coverage from all that unfolded with the Carter decision on medical assistance in dying. In September, it featured Jan Storch's Ethics in Practice paper on end-of-life issues. In June, we featured Philippe Voyer, a professor, a professor from Laval University, to provide guidance on how to communicate with dementia patients. These and many other topics were all discussed at length at the federal level via multiple consultations and committees. While CNA has been busy, I would like to take a moment to highlight the nurses across the country who excelled and stood out this past year. Rochelle Barr won the Hubert Gauthier Prize for her contributions to healthcare in French. Rochelle, your positive contribution to healthcare in Canada is clearly undeniable. There were also a few of our colleagues who were inducted into the Order of Canada. Catherine Hanna from Alberta and one of our advisors at CNA was nominated last year and was inducted just a few weeks ago. Madeline Dion Stout from Delta BC was recognized for her contributions to the development of Aboriginal health care in Canada. And Leah Hollands from BC as well was recognized for her contributions to public service and organ transplantation. As you can see, 2015 was a very busy year for CNA and 2016 has already allowed us uh, great opportunities for influence on national policies. We look forward to when we look at the priorities for home and seniors care that were our main focus in 2015. The future is bright, clearly, as we enter into a new world with a new health accord. I would like to take a couple of time, uh, moments to make a couple of thank yous. First of all, I would sincerely like 
to thank and congratulate NANB on their 100th anniversary this year. And CNA has been enormously privileged to be here at this annual meeting of members and convention during their centennial year. It's been clearly a delight to, to work with the NAB team throughout the preparation for our centennial and for our conference and your centennial. Thank you, NANB. To Karima, your exceptional leadership over the past two years, your principle-based approach to addressing challenges and opportunities has been appropriate, goal-oriented, and inspirational. Whenever I pick up the phone and have a little issue, she always starts with, well, what are your principles that you are trying to follow? And uh, sometimes it's a bit daunting on a Monday morning at 8, but, you know, you have to go with what you go with. And what will this look like on a Monday morning, she says to me. You can be proud of your accomplishments. And to Barb Shellian, an Alberta sister, we look very much forward to working with you as you assume your role. And I would like to, to acknowledge the tremendous work of our board members and what they do on behalf of all of us who are nurses in Canada. For many board members, sitting at the CNA board is their third job their first being their regular paid job, the second being a leader within their own jurisdiction or with other organizations, and finally with CNA. In addition to the many deliverables and accomplishments, here are a few interesting metrics. The board attended three face-to-face -face meetings. The board traveled over 258,000 kilometers on behalf of CNA. The board participated in 10 board meeting teleconferences. The board passed 37 motions and considered 14 resolutions. The board signed two MOUs. The board approved a partnership accord. And my favorite, the board reviewed 1,019 pages of documents. <laughs> Quite a thing for a volunteer job. So on behalf of all of us here at CNA, I want to thank Karima. I want to thank Barb. I want to thank our board of directors, and I want to thank you, our members, who have made it such a privilege to work with such a profession in the interest of the health of Canadians. Thank you.